Hello besties, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Javilla Shanti here. Today we have a book haul. Oh, I'm kind of like a CEO. You know when they're giving like, their little TED talk, they're like, <laughs> anyway, today we have a book haul. This is kind of like my August book haul or like my end of summer book haul if you will. This was supposed to be a book shopping video with a haul but turns out I filmed that entire video and I hated it so much after editing it. And here's the thing about me is I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I like things to be as perfect as possible and if it's not, I'm like cut the cameras delete the footage no thank you <laughs> so that's kind of what happened here i'm still gonna include the clips that i actually like from the book shopping in here so i'm gonna go ahead and insert that and then when we get back i'm gonna give you guys a haul if you haven't subscribed if you go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more i love you all so much and let's get into the video <laughs> such good deals at books a million today like three good books for five dollars ciao it's a good day hello Ramona I can't shake the simplest feeling beyond the ghost we stand on the opposite shore hello Ramona I knew going to Barnes and Noble on a Saturday would be a mistake because it's so freaking busy and I get so almost a dice not scared but like embarrassed of like filming or like worried that somebody's gonna be like you can't film in here so let's just get like a little worried so I only got clips on my phone I did not use my camera and I did not get as much clips as I wanted to or needed to but gotta just charge it to the game For all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Alright, now that you guys have seen the book shopping portion I'm gonna give you guys a haul I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books And I'm really excited I went to Books A Million I went to Barnes & Noble And I went to Target, of course I always say this because I want people to be able to like afford books Target always has the best sales on books. Their prices are just always like a lot cheaper than it would be at like Barnes & Noble. So if you want to get into reading and you can't really afford to buy like a $20 book, definitely Target does such a good job at their pricing on their books. Also, if you go to the Target app, you can get price matches, which is such a phenomenal thing where like sometimes a book in store might be $17 or like $14 you can go on the app and it's like 10 that's not always guaranteed but it is a nice little you know a nice little touch to have um so that's kind of nice then I also went to books a million I got three books there for $15 they have like the little bargain deals that like it, you have to search for but you can get like cheaper books there and then obviously Barnes & Noble is a little bit more expensive so there's that. So those are the three bookstores I went to. I'm going to start my haul. I recently got into reading Kennedy Ryan and she is a black author which I've been trying to read more like black authors or like POC authors just because most of the books I have read have been very uh like white centered I guess or just like doesn't really have people of color which I noticed that when I do read people of color books I do enjoy it more and sometimes like i don't know it's just more like relatable and so i read kennedy ryan she's like one of my favorite like poc authors um i read before i let go by her and i really really loved it so much just because it wasn't very like um triggering or like trauma based which i feel like a lot of like poc books they do surround trauma a lot which i just want a cute little love story okay so i really really liked before i let go because it was just like fun love you know i got another book by her she has the all the king's men series so i got that and the first book i got is the kingmaker and i will tell you guys i already read these two simply because i'm refilming this haul okay so anyway, I got The Kingmaker by Kennedy Ryan and this is about like a native girl who meets a white guy and she's like very into like poli- not politics but like protesting equality and stuff like that. She lives on native land. Her land keeps getting invaded by like 
big businesses or like um, this oil mogul is trying to run a pipeline through her land so she's like fighting for that and she kind of become like really big enemies with this oil mogul guy and then she meets his son which she has no idea it's his son and he like saves her from getting assaulted and they have like a really intense connection and then we fast forward four years later and they meet again in Amsterdam and they have like a week-long romance and I don't know like they just have like this really intense connection then she ends up finding out that he's the son of the oil mogul guy that she really hates and so now they're no longer like interested in each other I guess you could say or he's still interested in her but she's just so turned off by him and then it fast forward like 10 years later where they reconnected once again because he's like very persuasive in trying to get her to like him again and that's basically what the first book is about the first book ends on like a really insane cliffhanger and that's where the second book the rebel king picks up and i really just want to give my thoughts on you know them yet i will give my thoughts on my august reading wrap up but we have the rebel king which is the second book in the king's men series and this book picks up where the first book leaves off and maxim who's the male love interest he's still trying to get her to um love him and they're kind of like figuring out their situation in the second book i feel like i don't really know how to give a good synopsis of it so i'll probably just read the back so you guys can kind of understand surrender is what maxim k demanded of flex and hunter's body and heart but she has other plans together they were fast burning fascination and combustible chemistry the son of a oil baron and the warrior daughter fighting to preserve her heritage she trusted him and he turned out to be a thief who stole her love if what they had was a lie why had it felt so real <sighs> i please get these books that's all i'm gonna say get these books and i mean immediately if you don't take any recommendation all the kingsman series by kennedy ryan i think there's also like a book 2.5 which i think is a novella I don't know but i need to get my hands on that asap the next book i got is the summer of broken rules by kl walther and this book is about a girl meredith fox who recently lost her sister and um 18 months ago and she shut everyone out but this summer she's looking to kind of reclaim her life and so now she's on a family vacation at martha's vineyard which is kind of why i got it because i've been really into like martha's vineyard lately i just watched a whole like reality show about martha's vineyard and the history there and also like people being crazy it was really fun they're vacationing at martha's vineyard a perfect place to reconnect her extended family is gathering for the big summer wedding and although meredith is dateless and after being unexpectedly dumped she's excited to participate in the tr traditional family fox game of assassin that will take place during the week of wedding festivities claire has always loved the game and meredith is determined to honor her legacy um, when Meredith forms an alliance with a cute groomsman, she finds herself getting distracted. Meredith tries to focus on the game and to win it for her sister, but she can't help falling for him. And as the week progresses, she realizes she's not only at risk for losing the game, but also her heart. I know this is a YA moment, which I'm really excited. I don't know, it's kind of like a little summer theme, so I feel like this is a perfect way to close out the summer. I also got another book with uh, POC characters. They have Asian characters in this one. This is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. I don't know if that's how you say it. I feel like I always butcher these names. This book is about Anna who she has achieved like career success. She had like a viral YouTube video and now every day she's trying to replicate that and she's stuck in a loop of not really being able to which I feel like is kind of relatable. As a content creator, I feel like sometimes, you know, the circle is real basically and so she's like stuck in the loop and then her long-term boyfriend uh proposes like a plan to have an open relationship before the final commitment a hurt and angry anna decides that if he wants an open relationship then she does too translation she's going to embark on a string of one night stands the more unacceptable the men the better that's for tattooed motorcycling Juan? Juan? i don't know how you pronounce this name their first attempt at one night stand fails as does their second and their third because being with kwan is more than just blank he accepts anna on an unconditional level that she herself has just began to understand however when tragedy strikes anna's family she takes on a role that is ill-suited for her 
until the burden of expectations threaten to destroy her. Anna and Quan have to fight for their chance at love, but to do that, they also have to fight for themselves. This sounds so good, and I love reading just like other POC books because I feel like, I don't know, you get like so much touch of culture. So that sounds really fun, and I'm really excited to read that. Then I also got The Return by Nicholas Sparks, who is the king, the icon, really. I feel like you could even say legend. This book is about Trevor Benson, who never intended to move back to New Bern, North Carolina. Okay, Sal. Um, but when Warner Blast, outside the hospital where he works in Afghanistan, sent him home with devastating injuries, the cabin he inherited from his grandfather seems as good place to regroup as any. Tending to his grandfather's beloved beehives, Trevor isn't prepared to fall in love with a local. Yet, even as the deputy sheriff Natalie Matterson seems to replicate his feelings, she remains frustratingly distant, making Trevor wonder what she's hiding. What is she hiding? Further complicating his stay is the presence of a stolen teenage girl, Callie, who lives in the trailer park down the road. Trevor hopes he can shed light on the mysterious- Wait, hold on. I'm missing a book. I am missing a book. I actually got eight books. Trevor hopes she can shed light on the mysterious circumstances surrounding his grandfather's death, but she offers few clues until a crisis triggers a race to uncover the true nature of Callie's past. Okay, this is getting a little messy. In his quest to unravel Callie and Natalie's secrets, Trevor will learn the true meaning of love and forgiveness and that in life, in order to move forward, we must often return to the place where it all began. That is The Return by Nicholas Sparks. It sounds really good. It sounds a little bit like mysterious, like suspenseful. I'm really excited to read that. Then I also got The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And this is going to look a YA mystery moment. And this is about a girl, Avery Grams. And she is from like a poorer family. Her mom died. She's like living with her sister. And she one day gets like a summons to go to a will reading for a guy who's a billionaire. Tobias Hawthorne dies and leaves her virtually his entire fortune. The only catch, Avery must move into his sprawling mansion filled with secret passages, riddles, and coats. Unfortunately for Avery, Avery, Hawthorne House is also occupied by the family that was just disinherited. This includes the four Hawthorne grandsons, dangerous magnetic boys who grew up with every expectation that one day they will inherit billions. Hair apparent Grayson is convinced that Avery is a con woman, even though she's literally a child in high school. But I digress. Is a con woman, and he's determined to take her down. But his brother, Jameson, views her as their grandfather's last hurrah. A twisted riddle, a puzzle to be solved, caught in a world of wealth and privilege, with danger around every turn. But a young girl who she inherit billions from some strange guy, but the only way to rightfully claim what was willed to her is to play the games and kind of solve the riddles. So that's basically what this is about. Sounds really fun, really interesting, and I'm really excited to find out what's really going on in the world of Avery Grams. Then I also got Drunk in Love by Jasmine Gillory. Gillory? I don't know how you say this. It's my second book from her. I got this from Books A Million. It was like $5. I thought, you know, what a steal. So I actually read While We Were Dating by her, I think like a year ago, over a year ago, and I liked it. Didn't like that it was third person, but I digress. This book is about Margot Noble, who needs to release some stress from running her family winery with her brother. Enters Luke, the sexy and charming and best of all, in the too small world of Napa, a stranger. The chemistry between them is undeniable, and Margot is delighted that she looked into the perfect one night stand. She'll never have to see again. That is, until the winery's new hire, Luke, walks in the next morning. Margot is determined to keep things purely professional, but when their every direction reminds her of the attraction still bubbling between them, it proves to be much more challenging than she expected. This sounds really good. This is a contemporary romance. It sounds really fun, and I'm really excited to read these, actually, or read this. It looks like it's third person as well, but 
it does sound pretty interesting. Last but certainly not least, you guys know I'm the biggest L. Kennedy fan. And I finally got the Dare um, by L. Kennedy. This is a part of the Bryu series. I think this might be the last one. I'm actually not sure what the setup is or like the order of the book. But I have read the other ones in the Bryu series. I don't know how this Greek stuff is. But anyway, when I issued the challenge, I can't say no. The Dare is to seduce the hottest new hockey player in the junior class, Connor Edwards. Connor Edwards is a regular at Greek World parties and in Greek World sorority events. That's disgusting. That's gross. He's the one you fall for before you can even learn that guys like him don't give girls like me a second chance. Except, Mr. Popular throws me for a loop. Rather than laughing in my face, he does me a solid by letting me take him upstairs and to pretend we were getting busy. Even crazier, now he wants to keep pretending. Turns out Connor loves games and he thinks it's fun to pull the wool over my frenemy's eyes. But resisting his easy charm and surfer boy hotness is damn near impossible, though I'm realizing there's much more to Connor's story than his fan club can see. And the longer the silly ruse goes on, the greater the damage of it all blowing up in my face. Okay, I love Elle Kennedy. I feel like she's just so fun. She's so entertaining. I love her little spicy college romances. I love her little hockey whatever. They're so fun. And I'm really excited to read this. I'm probably going to start this right now actually because it sounds really good. And it's not too thick like her other books. That's pretty much it for my August book haul. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have enjoyed it and you like it and want to see more of me, subscribe. Subscribe. Okay, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, toodles. Ooh, I'm gonna pull up study to the side. She keep coming at me every day and night. When I left in my life, started feeling right.